Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Berurah share. We're holding Mishnah Berurah Chelik Aleph, and we will be learning today Emir Tzashem. I hope Daf Mem Amid Beis, as well as Mem Aleph Amid Aleph. My apologies for a brief absence last week, but now we're back, and I'm going to try to cover two pages in an effort to make up for some lost time. So, with that, let's get started immediately. Top line of Mem Amid Beis with a brand new Simon Simon Lamed Aleph. Din Tfilin Bishabis for Yom Tov, the halachas that govern the wearing or not wearing of Tfilin on Shabbos and Yom Tov by Bay Seifim. And here we have two Seifim. Now, this uh, topic, the question of wearing Tfilin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, is a rather fascinating one. And it, it's a little bit, it's deceptively complicated. So before we even begin to read the Shulchan Aruch, let me take you to a Gemara in Menachas Andaf Lamed Vav Amid Beis. The Gemara says as follows. The Gemara says, we know, Laila Lav Zman Tfilin. Uh, the Gemara says over here, Laila is not a Zman, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Laila Zman Tfilin. Laila is a time that you could wear Tfilin, Shabbos Nami Zman Tfilin, uh, the Gemara says it's not. I'm just looking for the right line here. My apologies. The Gemara brings down a brisa, the Tanya. The brisa says the pasuk tells us v'shamarta sachuka azois l'mayada miyamim yamima v'shamarta sachuka azois. You should keep this chayk of wearing tefillin l'mayada um, in its proper time miyamim yamima. And the Gemara, the brisa darshins yamim v'loy leilois. We wear tefillin during the day, but not by night. Mi yamim, on some days, v'loy kol yamim, not all days. Prat l'shabosais v'yamim toivim. This comes to exclude Shabbos and Yom Tov, that we do not wear tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Diva Rabbi Yaisi Aglili. This is the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi Aglili. Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says, Loy namach hu kazu, ela lepesach bilvad. He says that this... V'shamarta uh, sachuk azois is not a reference to Tfilin, it's a reference to the carbon Pesach. And he learns out this halacha from elsewhere, Nafkalei Behecha de Nafkalei Le Rebbe Akiva. Titania, Gemara now brings down another b'raisa, Rebbe Akiva, Rebbe Akiva says, Yachal yoniach adam Tfilin b'shabas ha'isu b'yabim toivim. You would think that a person should wear Tfilin on Shabbos and on Yom Tov. Tamad loimar, V'haya la'ois al yadacha u'lataitafais b'ein einecha. Tarak Daisha tells us in a Pasuk that's clearly speaking about Tvilin, Vahaya la ois al Yadacha, the Tvilin should be for an ois, for a sign on your hand, Ulataitafais Bain Einecha. And Rabbi Kiva Darshans from there, Mi Shatrichin Ois, we wear Tvilin on a day that requires an ois, Yatsu Shabasais Vyamim Taivim. This comes to exclude Shabbos in Yamtiv, Shehain Gufan Ois. Because Shabbos and Yom Tov are themselves an ice. We don't need an ice on Shabbos and on Yom Tov because Shabbos and Yom Tov are an ice. Rashi says over here, Shehain Atzman Ois, Bein HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yisrael. Shabbos is an ice uh, of the special relationship between the Rabbi Nishalai Laman Klal Yisrael. Dixiv, because the Pasuk says about Shabbos, Ki Oisi. It says, it says very clearly in the Pasuk that Shabbos is an ois. Yom Tov, well, as we're going to see in the Mishtabura, on Yom Tov it also says Shabbosain. So Yom Tov is an ois, Shabbos is an ois, and therefore Rabbi Akiva says that we learn out from the Pasuk of Ahaya la'ois al yadacha. When do we wear tefillin? We wear tefillin on days that require an ois, but on Shabbos and on Yom Tov we do not wear tefillin because those are not days that require an ice. The Rambam, coming off of this Gemara, the Rambam says in Perk Tfilin, uh, Perk Dalad of Hilchas Tfilin, Allah Yud, he says, Zman Anachas HaTfilin B'yayim V'loi Balayla. When do we wear Tfilin? By day, not by night. Shenamar Miyamim Yamima. So he brings down the Pasuk of Rabbi Yaisi Aglili, V'shamarta Sachuka Hazois Miyamim Yamima, and he says, that we wear tefillin by yom, miyamim by yom, v'loy balayla. That's the pasuk of Rabbi Yosi Aglili. Chuka zuhi mitzvah tefillin. The chayk in that pasuk is what chayk? It's the mitzvah of tefillin. Then the Rambam says, v'chein shabasa yisviyamim toivim 
Einon Zman Tfilin, and on Shabbos and Yom Tov we do not wear Tfilin, Shenemar Vahoyola Ois, Vishabos Ois, Vyamim Tovim, Haim Atzman Ois. So the Rambam is very interesting. The Rambam says that we don't wear Tfilin by night. He brings the Pasuk of Rabbi Yosi Aglili, Vishamarta Sachuka Azois, Vyamim Lamayada, Vyamim Yamima. And then he says we don't wear Tfilin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, and he brings the Pasuk of Rabbi Akiva. From And there would seem to be a critical difference between Rabbi Yaisi Aglili and Rabbi Akiva. And that is that if we use the Pasuk of Vahaya to tell us that on Shabbos and Yom Tov we don't wear tefillin, that would yield that on Shabbos and Yom Tov we don't wear tefillin because we are not required to. In other words, Vahaya tells us when do you wear tefillin? Like Rabbi Kiva said, on the days that require an ice, on a regular weekday when we need the ice of tefillin, that's when we wear tefillin. But on Shabbos and Yom Tov, shehein atzmam ois, but Shabbos and Yom Tov, which are an ice in of themselves, don't require tefillin. So don't, why don't we wear tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov? Because those are days that do not require the ice of tefillin. That's Rabbi Akiva. But according to Rabbi Yaisi Aglili, we learn an app from Vishamarta Esachuka Azois Lamayada Miyamim Yamima. According to Rabbi Yaisi Aglili, the Pasuk of Vishamarta, that would indicate an Isser. We, we always learn in the Gemara, the Lashon of Shemira, he Shamer, that indicates a Lav. From Rabbi Yaisi Aglili, it would sound like there's a Lav, there's an Isser Daraisa to wear tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Because v'shamarta sachuk azais l'mayada. Keep this chayk in its proper time, miyamim yamima, miyamim, but not Shabbos and Yom Tov. There's an iser to wear tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. But according to Rabbi Yekiv, it's not an iser. It's just that, that we're not required to wear tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov because Shabbos and Yom Tov don't require the ice. Yet, there would be an Iser Daraisa to wear Tefillin, even according to Rabbi Akiva, if you put on the Tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, L'Shem Mitzvah. Why? Because since you're not required to wear Tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, if you put them on L'Shem Mitzvah on Shabbos and Yom Tov, you're being over the Iser of Baal Taisif. So then there would be an Iser, but that would only be if you put them on L'Shem Mitzvah. If you put them on for some other reason, let's say you put on the tefillin simply because you needed to transport them from one place to another place and you didn't have a free hand. So you put them on in order to transport them. So then you're not wearing the Lushe Mitzvah, then you're not over Baal Taisif. So then there's no Issa Daraisa. So against this backdrop, let's take a look here at the Mechaber. Says the Mechaber, Simon Lamed Aleph Sif Aleph, B'Shabbos V'Yom Tov, on Shabbos and on Yom Tov, Oser La Nyach Tfilin, it's Oser to wear Tfilin. Okay, what is that Iser? Well, says the Bechaber, why don't you wear Tfilin on Shabbos and Yom Tov? Mipnei Shehem Atzmam Ois. Because Shabbos and Yom Tov have their own ice, and therefore you do not require the ice of Tfilin. That's Rabbi Akiva. That's Vahayala Ois al Yadachol Taitafa Ispeine Necha. So the Oser over here, when the Mechaber says Oser Lahanyach Tfilin, it doesn't mean an Iser Daraisa, unless you're putting it on L'She Mitzvah, in which case there's an Iser of Baal Taisif. But from, in the context of Hilchas Tfilin themselves, we're paskining like Rabbi Akiva, that it comes from V'hoi Ois al Yadach Olo Taitafa Necha, so in of itself there would be no Iser Daraisa in putting on Tfilin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. But if you put them on L'Shem Mitzvah, you're over on Baal Taisif. Continues the Mechaber. Okay, so Shabbos and Yom Tov are their own ice. So what's the problem of putting on Tfilin, which is another ice? Explains the Mechaber. If you put on the Tfilin, which are, are an additional ice, you're being mezalzel, in Shabbos and Yom Tov. Here at Shabbos and Yom Tov, you have a beautiful ice of the relationship between Klal Yisrael and the Rabbi Nishalaylam, and you're going and you're putting on tefillin, that's mashma that I need the ice of tefillin. Well, how about the ice of Shabbos and Yom Tov? So you're denigrating the ice of Shabbos and Yom Tov, you're being mazalzal in the covet of Shabbos and Yom Tov, 
by putting on the ice of tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Let's take a look here at the Mishnah It says the Mishnah is cut and aleph. First, the Mishnah tells us, when we say that you don't put on tefillin on Yom Tov, the Yom Tov Sheini Nami Bechlal, this also includes Yom Tov Sheini Shal Goliath, Ledidon Bnei Chutz Laretz, for us who unfortunately live in Chutz Laretz, so we have two days Yom Tov, so we don't put on tefillin the second day Yom Tov either. Eyes cut base, Osir Lahan Yach, you're not allowed to put on the tefillin. Says the Mishnah not only are you not allowed to put the tefillin on, Vafilu Betiltal Yesh Omrim Gamkein the Osir, there are those that say, and he brings this down, well, he t- sends us to the Bir Alacha, he brings this down from the Taz, the Mugan Avram, that not only are you not allowed to put on tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, but they're also muktza, they're also retiltal, you're not allowed to move them. Im loy l'tzarech gufam o'y mekaimam, unless you're moving them l'tzarech gufam or mekaimam, kishar kli shemalachtoy l'iser, like any other keli, that's also because it's a kli shemalachtoy l'iser, where it's muktza, and you're not allowed to move it unless it's tzarech gufay or tzarech mekaimai. What are tzarech gufay and tzarech mekaimai? Well, let's say the tefillin are sitting on a, ch- on a chair on the uh, one of the dining room chairs, or it's sitting on the dining room table, and you need the suda, so you need the place where the tefillin are. That's tzarech mikaymai. So you're allowed to take the tefillin, take them off the dining room table, and put them where they belong. Tzarech gufai is a little bit hard to figure out where for tefillin tzarech gufai. A hammer is a klisha malach toil isa. You're allowed to move it tzarech gufai. If you need to use the hammer for something that's mutter, the typical usage of a hammer is binyan or stira. Those are also on Shabbos. But you could also use a hammer to break open a walnut. So that you're allowed to do with the hammer on Shabbos. That's tzarech gufai, tzarech gufai. You need to use the hammer itself in an oifen shel heter, then you're allowed to move the hammer. Tzarech mekaymai is the hammer is on the dining room table. So too by tefillin. Tzarech mekaymai, the tefillin are on the dining room table. Tzarech gufai is a little hard to imagine. The HRM continues to Mishnaburah Dichteshala Yiplu. Let's say the Twillin are located in a place and you're afraid that they might fall, Oishala Yignavum, or you're afraid that they're in, they're in an unprotected area and they might be stolen, Nami Mutalotatala Mimakim Lamakim, you would also be allowed to move it from place to place. On the pressing circumstances, you could be makal v'ayin b'bir alacha. There's a nice bir alacha here, dibra maskal asol aniach, that goes into greater detail of the tefillin being muktzah. Now, what happens if you went away for Shabbos and you didn't bring your Shabbos talus and you only have your vachadikat talazekel that has your tefillin inside? You could open it up and you could take out your talus. You're not even moving the tefillin. Maybe you're moving them in Stiltel Menatzad. Maybe you're going to move them indirectly, but that's certainly no problem. Ois cut and gimel. Why don't you wear the tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov? Because Shehein Atzmam Ois. Because Shabbos and Yom Tov are their own ois, and the, those days do not require the ois of tefillin. Says the Mishnah Berurah, what does it mean that Shabbos and Yom Tov are an ois? Bein HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Bein Yisrael, of the relationship that exists between Klal Yisrael and Barei Olam. Shenema, like the Pasuk says, Ki oisi beini uvein eichem. Shabbos is an ois, it's a sign between us and the Rabbi Nishal Olam. The Yom Tov Gamke Mikre Ois, Yom Tov is also called an Ois, the Bepesach Mitzrayim Ksiv Ois, by Pesach Mitzrayim, by the Yom Tov of Pesach, it's called an Ois in the Pasuk, the Hukshu Kal Mayada Hashem Beparshis Emar, and all of the Yom Tovim are compared one to another in Parshis Emar, so since we find that Pesach is called an Ois, the other Yom Tovim are also an Ois. It's very interesting. Shabbos, why do we keep Shabbos? Because, so to speak, the Rabbi Yishalaylam Rested, right? The Rabbi Shalom finished the, the work of Brias Olam in Sheish Yisimei Bereshis. So on Yom Ashvi, we're also Shavas Vayinafash. We keep Shabbos. Now, Brias Olam really applies to everybody in the world, even to a non Jew, right? He also lives in the world that the Rabbi Shalom created. Yet, the Chazal tell us, Goisha Shavas Chayev Misa, an, an Eino Yehudi. That keeps Shabbos kil chasa is chayiv misa. Why? Why can't he also celebrate sheishes yimei bereishis? The answer is he has no right to celebrate sheishes yimei bereishis. We have a right to celebrate sheishes yimei bereishis because we dedicate our lives to avodas Hashem. We recognize 
that the Rabbi Nishalaylam is the Bari Olam, and we dedicate our lives to live according to the Torah and to be Oivet Hashem. So we have a right to go celebrate Cheshus Yimei Bereshus. The Eina Yehudi who does not live that life, how does he come to celebrate Cheshus Yimei Bereshus? Are you really recognizing, acknowledging the Rabbi Hashem's mastery over the world that you should come and you should celebrate Shabbos? That does not work. Ice cut and dalit. Since Shabbos and Yom Tov are an ice, we do not require an ice acher. The Hainu Tvilin, which is the Tvilin, the Ksiv Behu Vahayalachala ice al Yadacha. Ice cut and hay, and this is a very critical Sif cotton. Haya Zilzel. So, what did the Machaber tell us? The Machaber told us that on Shabbos and Yom Tov is Osir Lahanyach Tvilin, because those days don't require an ice, because they themselves are an ice. And if you put on the ice of tefillin, you're being mezalzal in the ice of Shabbos and Yom Tov. Says the Mishnah the gam over mishum lav the bal taisif. Like I told you, there is also a potential iser daraisa. Right now, we have been discussing what is essentially an iser dara, not an iser darabanan, but it's we don't put tefillin on on Shabbos and Yom Tov because we're not required to. It doesn't require an ice, and if you do put on the ice, you're being mizalzel in Shabbos and Yom Tov. But that's not an isid daraisa that we're being over by being mizalzel in Shabbos and Yom Tov. Now, says the Mishnah but there is also a potential isid daraisa. The gamma over Mishnah lav the bal Once you're not required to put on the tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, if you do so l'shei mitzvah, you're being over bal taisif. V'hu she'anichan l'shei mitzvah. But that's only if you put them on l'shei mitzvah. Alva b'menichad shaloi l'shei mitzvah. But if you put them on shaloi l'shei mitzvah, ein by mishum bal taisif. That's the golden rule of bal taisif. You're only over bal taisif when you do something extra if you do it l'shei mitzvah. But if you don't put on the tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov l'shei mitzvah, then you're not being over bal taisif. Ve'gam mishol zilzol ein by. And also, if you put on the tefillin not l'shei mitzvah, then there's no zilzal on Shabbos and Yom Tov either. How are you being mezalzal on Shabbos and Yom Tov? If you put on the tefillin l'shem mitzvah, so that means that you're putting them on to be mekayim the pasuk of a hayu l'chala ois al yadachal u'taytafa ekspeinei necha. You're putting them on l'shem ois. Putting them on l'shem mitzvah and putting them on l'shem ois are one and the same. If you do that, then you're being mezalzal on Shabbos and Yom Tov. But if you don't put them on l'shem mitzvah, there's no bal taisif, there's also no zilzal on Shabbos and Yom Tov. So at this point, it sounds like if you put tefillin on on Shabbos and Yom Tov, not l'shei mitzvah, you're not over anything. You're not over the darais of Baal Tosef. You're not being mezalzal in Shabbos and Yom Tov. So what's the problem? But, says the Mishnah Bura, im loy shemenichan b'farhesya, the az asim in If you put the tefillin on on Shabbos and Yom Tov b'farhesya, in public, you're being over on an Issa Why? What is the Rabbanon? So over here, it sounds like the Issa Rabbanon that he's referring to, he brings this down from the Bach. Looking at the Bach, it sounds like the Issa Rabbanon is, well, you're not supposed to put on Tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov because Now, you are not putting them on L'Shei Mitzvah. So since you're not putting them on, L'Shei Mitzvah, you're not being over about Taisif, and you're also not being Mazalzal on Shabbos and Yom Tov. But the people who see you wearing Tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, they don't know that. They don't know what's going on between your ears. They don't know that you didn't put it on L'Shei Mitzvah. Memelet is an Isid because you're doing something which really could be an Isid Daraiz of Baal Taisif, or it could be that you're being Mazalzal on Shabbos and Yom Tov, and you're doing it by Farhesia. That's an Issa Rabbanon. So that's one particular Issa Rabbanon. But now I want to send you back to Daflamites Amid Beis, to Simon Chavtes, Mishtabrura, Ice Cotton Beis, where, interestingly enough, we're going to see another potential Issa Rabbanon. If you go into Mishtabrura, Ice Cotton Beis, he's talking over here the same concept. He's talking about somebody who puts on tefillin on Shabbos. Says the Mishnah Berurah, Pirish. After Kaimel on Shabbos, V'yom Tov Lav Zman Tefillin, 
Even though we pass in that on Shabbos and Yom Tov you do not wear tefillin, and if you would put them on l'shem mitzvah over our bal toisif, you're over our bal toisif. We come akim. Nevertheless, kevin she eminichan alav balikav on l'shem mitzvah ain bazeh iser min atayra. Since if you put on the tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, shaloy l'shem mitzvah, there is no iser daraisa of bal toisif. You're not over bal toisif. You're only over in Isidur Abanan. What's the Isidur Abanan? And if you look at the Gimel in the Sharetzian, he brings this down from the Beis Yosef. Beis Yosef says there's another Isidur Abanan of putting on Tfilin on Shabbos. And that is, if you put on Tfilin on Shabbos, it, it's very hard to call it really. Well, even if you put it on Derek Malbush, it's like a beged. But if you go out to the Rosh Hashanah wearing the tefillin, we're afraid that you might come to take the tefillin off in Rosh Hashanah. Shema Yafiach Bahem. Maybe you're going to be wearing the tefillin in Rosh Hashanah. You're going to feel the need to pass gas, and you're going to go run to take the tefillin off, and you're going to come to carry the tefillin in Rosh Hashanah on Shabbos. So here we have another possible Isidur Abanan for wearing tefillin on Shabbos. So what do we have here so far? We have from the Pasuk of Ahayala Ois al Yadachalo Taitafa Ispein Enecha, we don't wear tefillin on Shabbos in Yom Tov because we are not required to. Why aren't we required to? Because Shabbos and Yom Tov are their own ice. so those are days that do not require an additional ice. Memele were not required to wear tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Once we're not required to wear them, if you wear them, there are two problems. Problem number one, you're being mezalzal in Shabbos and Yom Tov. You're denigrating the ice of Shabbos and Yom Tov. That's not an Issa Daraisa, right? Maybe it's Issa Darabon and you're denigrating Shabbos and Yom Tov. Another potential problem, if you put them on L'Shem Mitzvah, you're over Daraisa of Baal Taisif. If you don't put them on L'Shem Mitzvah at all, you're not over Baal Taisif. You're not mezalzal in Shabbos and Yom Tov. But if you do it before Hesia, does it is a Drabanon? Why is there an Issa Drabanon? Because you're not supposed to be wearing Tfilin on Shabbos and Yom Tov because of potential for Baal Taisif and potential for being Mazalzal and Shabbos and Yom Tov. If you do that before Hesia, even though you're not being Mazalzal and Shabbos and Yom Tov because you didn't put it on the Shei Mitzvah, and you're not being over Baal Taisif because you didn't put it on the Shei Mitzvah, but Mid Rabbanon, you're not allowed to walk around before Hesia wearing Tfilin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Another possible Issa Drabanon is that by putting on the Zigzera against putting on Tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, because you might go out to Rosh Hashanah wearing the Tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Why is that a problem? Because you might come to take them off. Why would you come to take them off? Shema Yafiach Bahem. Very, very interesting. All of the different potential problems that exist over here. Continues the Mishnah Berurah. V'yesh machmirin b'chal gavni im loy shemunachim b'bizayim. There are those that are machmir. And he brings this down from a taz. Now, I think when he says that yesh machmirin b'chal gavni, there are those that are machmir not to put on tefillin under any situation on Shabbos and Yom Tov, even if you're not doing it l'shem mitzvah, and even if you're not doing it b'farhesia. So in other words, in your living room, on Shabbos, you decide you want to put on Tefillin, and you're not putting them on L'Shei Mitzvah. Why are you putting them on? I don't know why you're putting them on. Maybe you want to sit down in your study and you want to learn, and the Tefillin are, are in the way. So uh, you're allowed to move them because it's Sarach Mekaymai. But you don't want to go, you don't have a good place to put them. So okay, I'll put the Shalraish on my head, and I'll put the Shalyat on my arm. I'm not putting on L'Shei Mitzvah, and I'm not before Hesia. Okay. Yesh machmir in b'chol gavni. Maybe that's the base Yosef that we learned earlier, right? In Simon Chavtes, that you can't put them on Shema Yitzel Rishos Arabim because you might go out to Rishos Arabim. In Loishu Menachem B'Bizayin, unless the Tefillin are sitting in an Oifin B'Zayin, Kigayin I might see Tefillin B'Shabbos Pasade, like you're walking out in, in the Sada on Shabbos and you find a pair of Tefillin laying there. Then Chazal allowed you to put them on, walk with them in Rosh Hashanah and bring them into the city. Kemoshe Yisparle Kaman Shin 
Aleph. So very, very, I find this to be a very fascinating short little sif over here. This question of the Isser of wearing Tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, you see how much there is in the background. Now, just to show you a little bit more, let's take a look here at the Bir Alacha Dibra Maskal Hoya Zilzal. Ayin Masha Kasafti Mimish Debura Sif Katn Hei, Vuhu Shehen Yichad. Chavetz Chaim says, You see, in Mish Debura Ice Katn Hei, I told you that this Isser, the Isser that the Machaber talks about to put on Trillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, he says, What is this Isser? This is there is you're building mazalzal and Shabbos and Yom Tiv. There's a potential for Baal Taisif, but that's only if you put them on L'Shem Mitzvah. Says the Mishnah Bura, says the Bira Alacha, whom he Magan Avram Le'el B'Simon Chavtes. I found this in the Magan Avram and Simon Chavtes. Ach, when this bar b'dvarav. But what's not clear from the Magan Avram is, im yesh by al kol panim is in the Rabbanon. Is there a flat out is it the Rabbanon to put on tefillin on Shabbos, even if you don't put them on the Mitzvah? So what I told you is, if you don't put them on the Mitzvah, the Mishnah himself said, if you put them on Befarhesya, there's an is it the Rabbanon, and in Simon Chavtes we saw a potential is it the Rabbanon Shemayetzei behem l'rishosaram. Over here the Chavetz Chaim says in the Bir Alacha from the Magen Avram. I don't see clearly whether it is a Isid Rabbanon or not to put them on if you're not doing it L'Shem Mitzvah. V'ayin bebach, he says, take a look at the bach. Shemash bemidvarov, de'ein Isid Rabbanon on a filim with Rabbanon. From the bach, it sounds like, there's only an Isid Rabbanon if you put them on Befarhesia. But if you don't put them on Befarhesia, from the bach, you don't see an Isid Rabbanon. The kavanasai b'mnichan shaloy L'Shem Mitzvah. And the bach is talking about when you don't put them on L'Shem Mitzvah. Dim loikein, because if he's not talking about that, if he's talking about a case where you put them on the shame mitzvah, balavach yikah bal taisif, then is it is the rice of bal taisif? Umei agra bebiuray besimit shen alav soisif zayin mashma gamkain de be'ena mechava b'hanachasad b'shabes yontel the shame mitzvah. I feel the midrabana ne'ena aser lahanicham. So you see over here from the bir alacha, from the mishabur here, from the mishabur in simul chavtes, there's a little uncertainty. Is there an Isid Rabbanon to put on tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov if you're not doing it L'Shem Mitzvah and you're not doing it B'Farhesia? There's a certain level of uncertainty over here whether or not it would be an Isid Rabbanon. Okay, now we go to Sif Beis. Says the Mechaber. Bechal HaMayid. Ooh, a hot button topic. Bechal HaMayid Gamkein Aser L'Anyach Tefillin Me'adam Ze Ba'atzmai. Al Chalamoid paskins the Mechaber, it's Osir Lon Yach Tfilin. The same way he said it's Osir Lon Yach Tfilin on Shabbos and Yom Tov, it's also Osir Lon Yach Tfilin on Chalamoid. Why? Sheyamei Chalamoid Gam Him Ois. Because the same way Shabbos and Yom Tov are an Ois, and you're not required to put on Tfilin, and if you do so, Lushay Mitzvah, you're over Bal Taisif, and you're denigrating Shabbos and Yom Tov, Says the Mechaber, the same exact reasons apply on Chalamayid. Says the Mishnah, is cotton dalit, ice cotton vav, gam heim ice Chalamayid. You also have an ice. Ba Pesach achilas matzah. What's the ice? Says the Mishnah, what exactly is the ice? What ice are we talking about on Chalamayid? So he says, well, Chalamayid Pesach, we eat matzah. The eating of matzah is an ice. Uba sukkah, yeshiva sa sukkah. And as far as chalamoit sukkahs, well, eating in the sukkah is an ice on chalamoit sukkahs. Vahayesh Aymrim and the Ramah, who we're going to see disagrees with the Mechaber. Vahayesh Aymrim, Sviralu, Kevin, Chemutaran, Basias, Malacha, Minatayra, Leka ice. The Ramah says, when the Ramah is going to say that there's a Yesh Aymrim that says that you could wear Tfilan on chalamoit, they, they hold. That Chalamayid is not an ice. Why? Because what's the ice of Shabbos and Yom Tiv? Isser Malacha. And on Chalamayid, Midar there's no Isser Malacha. Now that itself is a mouthful. Because whether or not the Isser Malacha on Chalamayid is a Durabon or a Duraisa is a major Machlokis Rishonim. Right? The Tosis holds this Daraisa. So it's a major Machlokis Rishonim whether or not the Isser Malacha is a Daraisa or a on on Chalamayid. But if there's no Issa Malacha on Chalamayid, so then maybe there's no ice. So here we have the question. 
Chalamoid, is there an Issa Malacha Darabonon, is there an Issa Malacha Daraisa? Also, what's the ice of Shabbos and Yom Tov? Is the ice the Issa Malacha, or is the ice the day of Shabbos and the day of Yom Tov? In Cain, Chalamoid is also an ice. Even if there's no Issa Malacha Midaraisa, but it's still Yom Tov, and there's Achilles Matzah, there's Yeshiva Soka. So it's an ice, and then you don't put on Trillin. The Mechaber Paskins, that Chalamite is also an ice, and therefore we don't put on Trillin. Ice cut in Zion. Lahanicham. No, 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 that's Chalamite. Yeah, we got to go into the Ramah first before we see ice cut in Zion. Haga, three lines down in the Shulchan Aruch. V'yeshaimrim shechalamayid chayiv b'tfilin. There are those that say, it is brought down from the rush, that in chalamayid, you're required, you're chayiv to put on tfilin. V'chein noyhagin b'chol galilois elu. And the Ramah says, this is how we are noyig in our regions. L'hanicham b'mayid, to put on tfilin on chalamayid, or l'varech aleim, and to make a brach on them. Ela she'ein mavarech aleim b'chol ram, However, we don't make a bracha out loud. The basic nesses in shul kamayshayim aysashana. The way we do the rest of the days of the year, says the Mishnah Rais cut in Zion lahanicham b'mayid. So we have the Yesh Imrim that says that we do put on tefillin on chalamayid, and the Rama said that's the way we're noyig lahanicham b'mayid. Says the Mishnah Berurah, v'chalitza tzatfillin. If you put on tefillin on chalamayid, when do you take them off? Says the uh, Mishnah Berurah. If you put on tefillin on chalamayid, you have to take them off before halal. Why? Because halal is only there because it's yomtiv. To that extent, yomtiv is an ice. We're not going to say that yomtiv is completely not an ice, and you should wear tefillin even when you say halal. When you're saying halal, your mom is acknowledging yomtiv, at that point you can't be wearing tefillin anymore. Even according to the sheet that you have to wear tefillin on chalamayid. V'achshav nahagu eizah anoshim l'salak anach hakedusha shal tefillin shmain esrei. And the Mishnah Berurah says nowadays some people have diminished to take off the tefillin already in the middle of chazar sashatzi after kedusha or mikamakam. However, tzricha lizar they have to take care lechavin l'shmaya chazar satvila to pay attention to chazar sashatz. Ois katan ches she'ein we doyik to put on tefillin. But we don't make a bracha. Why? If you're paskin that you have to put on tefillin chalamay, why wouldn't you make a bracha? Says the Mishnah Pirish, Mishum diyesh benichem diyesh she'ena menichem. Since there are some that do put on, some that don't put on, ayein mevarchem, and there are some that put on without a bracha. Yesh levarch bechashai. So if you do make a bracha, you should do it discreetly. Kadesha la lava lidem achlaikis, so that it should not come to machlaikis. V'chein, and similarly, la yelech behem berushos arabim l'beis hakneses, you shouldn't walk outside of the street to go to shul wearing the tefillin on chalamayid. V'achreinim is kimu l'odas ha-taz, the Mishnah Berurah says that the achreinim conclude, and uh, they paskin their machriya like the taz, the yoyse toiv l'hanichon b'li bracha, that it is better to put on the tefillin on chalamayid without a bracha, ki ha-bracha is enon ma'akvois, because the brach is not ma'ak of you, it doesn't prevent you from being makayim the mitzvah. It was suffolk brachas lahakal. And we always pass in suffolk brachas lahakal. We don't want to risk making a brachal of atala. So since we have this major machlaikis, whether or not you're chayiv to put on fill on the we would rather that you put them on without a bracha. Ubiprat, shahagra zal kosav she'en ladasa yesh oimrim ikar bashas. The gra takes a very hard line. The Gra says there's no makar in Shas for putting on tefillin on Chalamayid. And it would seem that you're not chayv to put on tefillin on Chalamayid because Chalamayid is an ice. Val kalpanim il inyan bracha bevada yesh lahachmer. So certainly when it comes to the question of making a bracha, we should be machmer and we should put on the tefillin without a bracha so as not to risk making a bracha lavatola. Gam, furthermore, says the Mishnabura, kaidem ahanacha. Before somebody puts on the tefillin on the chalamayid, yachshayiv b'dayto, you should have in mind, im ani mechoyiv, if I'm takechayiv to put on tefillin, ani manichon l'shei mitzvah. Then I'm putting them on l'shei mitzvah. V'em lav, and if I'm not chayiv, because chalamayid is an ois, ain ani manichon l'shei mitzvah. Then I'm not doing it l'shei mitzvah. U'bazeh yotzi yidei kuliyama, because then you're okay l'kuliyama. The Afla Savim the Khalamayid Enoizman Twillin, because then 
even according to the sheet that holds that there's no chiv to put on tefillin and chalamayid, because chalamayid is an ice, ain't an over about taisif. At least you're not going to be over about taisif. Since you're not bevadai being mechavin l'she mitzvah. And certainly we don't have to worry that we're denigrating the ice of Chalamayid. Because you're not denigrating the ice of Chalamayid, again, unless you put it on L'Shei Mitzvah. And you're having in mind that if I'm not Chayiv, I'm not doing it L'Shei Mitzvah. Certainly, Rabbein Tam Tfilin, you should not put on a Chalamayid. That far, we're not going to go to say that Rabbi Tam Tfilin, the Chumrah, or the extra Hidur of Rabbi Tam Tfilin, you should do on Chalamayim. Ait Kasra Achreinim, the Achreinim, also right. The Ain Nachrein Chebes Aknesses Achas Ktsasam Yenichu Tfilin, Ktsasam Lo Yenichu. It would not be proper that in one shul, some people should put on Tfilin, some people should not. Mishum Lois is going to do, because Lois is going to do, we dash it from the Pasuk, Laisasu Agudais Agudais. We don't want to make it look like Chas Vechalila, there are two Tyres. That some people are keeping one tire and some people are keeping another tire. Somebody who does not put on tefillin and chalamayid, but and now he finds himself davening somewhere where the minig is to put on tefillin. He should put them on. albeit without a bracha. And a tzibur that has the minig to put on tefillin should not change the minig. So, let's just give like an overall summation over here. What is the question of putting on tefillin on chalamayid or not? The question really boils down to, is chalamayid considered an ois or not? On the one hand, on chalamayid Pesach, we eat matzah, chalamayid sukkah, we eat in a sukkah. It is yomtiv, so that should serve as an ois. And therefore, you're not required to put on tefillin. If you put them on the Shei Mitzvah, you have two problems. You're being over about Taisiv Chas V'Shalom. You're also going ahead and denigrating um, Shabbos and Yom Tev. <clears throat> you also potentially have a problem with Bracha Levatala. The Mechaber Paskins, no, you do not put on tefillin on the The Ramah brings down from the Rush that there are those that do put on tefillin on the they put on tefillin a chalamayid because they hold that chalamayid is not an ois. Why isn't it an ois? Because they hold that the ois of Shabbos and Yom Tov is the Yisim Malacha. And a chalamayid, there's no Yisim Malacha. Or at best, there's only a limited Yisim Malacha. And therefore, chalamayid is not an ois. If chalamayid is not an ois, then you are chayv to put on tefillin. Says the Ramah that in our regions, we're noyig to put on tefillin and with a bracha. Says the Mishnabura, the Achroinim Amachria, that even if you put on tefillin, you should not put on tefillin with a bracha. Not only, first of all, you shouldn't put it on with a bracha, because Safik bracha is lahakal. We don't want to risk that you're making a bracha lavatala. Also, we don't want to risk that you should be over about What if the halak is really like the Mechaber? What if Kalamai really is a nice? Now you're putting them on the Shei Mitzvah, you might be over about Taisif. So says the Mishnabura, you put them on, don't put them on the Shei Mitzvah. Or at least have in mind with a Tanai. If I'm a Chayiv, I'm putting them on the Shei Mitzvah. If I'm not Chayiv, I'm not putting them on the Shei Mitzvah. Then you're not over about Taisif. You're also not denigrating uh, the ice of Chalamayid. And... <clears throat> Don't make a bracha, that way you don't risk a bracha lavatala. As everybody knows, there's widespread minhagim this way, widespread minhagim that way. The minig of the gra was talking not to put them on, and uh, it seems that the minig of most of the minig Yerushalayim, I think, is not to put on. So, nahar naharu pashte, minig Yisrael kedin, elu the elu divrei elikim chayim, everybody should follow their minig. Okay. Now we're going to go weiter. Let's go to Simon Lamed Beis. Say <clears> their ksivas <throat> tefillin, the proper order of writing tefillin, uboy nun beis seifim, and here we have 52 seifim. And here we get into the nitty gritty of the halachas of writing tefillin, uh, a difficult, uh, difficult simon, but let's go. Say the ksivas tefillin, uboy nun beis seifim. Says the Mechavah Sif Aleph. 
mitzvah's tefillin, the mitzvah of tefillin is, sheyichtoiv arba parshiyos. First, we have to write the Dalit parshiyos of tefillin. Shehein, which are, what are the Dalit parshiyos of tefillin? Kaddish li kol b'char ad l'mayada. So we have over here ten psukim in the parsha of Kaddish. Then we have the parsha of Ahoya ki yiviyacha ad ki b'choyzik yod ha'itziyanu Hashem mi Mitzrayim. We have six psukim over here. U parsha shema ad uvish arecha. Another, uh, I think, six psukim. Yeah. U parsha shvaya im shamaya ad al ha'aretz. And the parsha of Ahoya im shamaya, which is nine psukim. Okay, says the Mishnahbura, Ois Katan Aleph, Uparsha Shema. We have to write the Parsha of Shema. Fetzarach Lichtav Dalid de Echad, the Dalid of the word Echad, has to be written Kol Kach Gedoyla, it has to be written large enough, Kamoy Arba Dalsin Kitanim, it has to be equal to the size of four small Dalits. What exactly does that mean? The Efshe She'en Misharin Ba'is Eksav. It doesn't necessarily mean that whatever size you're writing the tefillin, right? We're used to computers, font sizes. So you have a font size 11, font size 12. So if you're writing the tefillin in font size Dalid, does that, in font size 12, does that mean that the Dalid of Echad has to be four times larger than all the other letters? Says the Mishra, no, not necessarily. Ve'ev she'en misharin ba'isay we don't necessarily measure by the size of the letters that you're writing the rest of the trillin. Rak kol she yesh by dalid dalsin kitanim ma'oid sagi. As long as you write the dalid of a size that you could have squeezed four tiny dalids in it, that's enough. Let me show you and because of this diag in the minigiz, lichtoiv rak gedoylo mishar dalsin shemaisik sav. The minigiz that we just write the dalid of echad larger than the other Dalids that are going to appear in Tefillin. So you're going to write Kadesh. Kadesh is going to have a Dalid. Make sure that the Dalid of Echad is larger than the Dalid of Kadesh. I don't know what the Makar of this Halacha is. Well, <clears throat> it's a Magam Mag of Ram, but I don't know what this is based on, that the Dalid has to be larger. Okay. Says the Ramah, second line in the Shulchan Aruch. Very fascinating halacha that I bet many people don't know. Hago, v'tzarech l'kosvam baseder hazeh. The Dalit parshas of the Tefillin have to be written in the order given by the Mechaber. Lichtoiv t'chila ha'kedemes batara. You have to write in the order in which the parshas appear in the Torah Kedosha. So, the first parsha Kadesh is in Shmois Yud Gimel, and it begins with Posik Aleph. The second parsha of Vahaya Kiviyacha is also in Shmois Yud Gimel, and it, it begins with Posik Yud Aleph. Shema is in Dvarim Vav, and it begins with Posik Dalid. Vahayim Shemaya is in Dvarim Yud Aleph, and it begins with Posik Yud Gimel. So the order that the Mechaber gives you the parshas of the Tefillin, Kadesh v'hoya kiviyacha, Shema v'hoya im Shemaya, that's the order in which they appear in the Torah Kedosha. Says the Ramah, Tzarek l'kosvam basei derazeh. The Sofer has to write the parshas in that order. Lichtov t'chila akedemis patara. He has to write the earlier parsha before the later parsha. V'im shina, and if he changes it, if he writes a later parsha earlier, puzzle. Then the tefillin are puzzle. Now we're going to see what that means in the Mishnah But in a simple scenario, in the tefillin shel roish, the four parshias are written on four different pieces of parchment. So let's say the cipher is making a shel roish. So he has an order for somebody for a shel roish. He sits down to start writing the parshas, and he says, "Okay, I, I got to write kadesh." You know what? I'm, I'm not so much in the mood of writing the parsha of Kadesh. I'm in the mood of writing the parsha of Shema. I'll write the parsha of Shema. So he writes the parsha of Shema, and then he puts it away in a bin. I'll put it away. This is the Shalroish Shema that I'm writing for the Shalroish of Pliny Almighty. 
And then tomorrow, okay, now I'm in the mood of writing Kadesh. So now I'll write a Kadesh. And then I'll write a Vahayim Shemaya. And then I'll write a, 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 a Vahayim Kiviyacha. So now I got four pieces of parchment. I have the four necessary parshas. Now I'll put them into the Shel Rosh. If I'm making Rashi Tfilin, I'll put them in the order of Rashi. If I'm making Rabbi Tam, I'll put them in the order of Rabbi Tam. But the bottom line is, I got all four pieces. Why can't I just put them in? No. You wrote them out of order. You have to write them in order. Now, by the Shal Roish, that Allah stands out a little bit more than it does by the Shal Yad, because the Shal Yad is all written on one parchment. So somehow it's easier for you to imagine in your mind that it's all written on one parchment. I got to write it in order. But the Shal Roish, it's not even on one piece of parchment. It's on four different pieces of parchment. What's the difference which one I wrote first and which one I wrote later? No, you have to write the individual parshas in the order in which they appear in the Torah Dosha. If you don't write them in the proper order, and then you take them and you stick them into a shalrosh, that shalrosh is going to be puzzled. That's the halacha of this Ramah. Ulechatchila continues the Ramah three lines down. Ulechatchila yichtov shal yad kaidim shalrosh. Lechatchila, you're a cipher. You're preparing tefillin for plainy almani. You should write the parsha of the shal yad before you write the parshas of the shalrosh. Now let's dive into the Mishnabura over here. Says the Mishnabura, Ois Katan Beis. Le Kasvam, the Ramah said that you must write the Parshas in the order in which they appear in the Torah Gdosha. Le Kasvam Kala Parshas. This halacha applies to all of the parshas of the Tefillin. Bein mea shalyad, whether we're dealing with the shalyad, where all of the parshas appear on one piece of cloth, or bein mea shal roish, or we're talking about the shal roish, which, where each parsha is written on an independent piece of cloth. Ois kot gimel, pasei der They must be written in this order. Where do we learn this halacha from? Tiksiv, because the Pasik says, v'hayu hadavarim ha'eleh. These words should be the Gemara Darshans, Bahava Yosan Yehu. The way they appear, as they are, Vihayu, they should be in the way that they are. The way that they are in the Taisha in the Tairak Daisha. Bahavyasan Yehu. The way they are in the Tairak Daisha, that's the way they should be. That's the way you have to create them. That's the way you have to write them. The Koshke. Now this halacha we just learned is that the individual parshas have to be written in the in this order. That means that the parsha of Kadesh has to be written before the parsha of Ahoyah Kiviyacha. Says the Mishnaburah now another halacha. The Cholshikain certainly shed Sarach Lizair that we must take care, Mitam Zer, for the same rationale, Sheyia kol parsha u parsha gufa nichteves kisidra. Not only does Kadesh have to be written before Vahoyaki Yiviyacha, the Parsha of Kadesh itself and the Parsha of Vahoyaki Yiviyacha itself, each individual Parsha has to be written in order. You can't write a later Pusuk before an earlier Pusuk, or a later word before an earlier word, or a later letter. Before an early, earlier letter. You cannot write the Dalit of Kadesh before you write the Kuf of Kadesh. You cannot skip even one ice. If you take the, the, you want to sit down and you want to write a Parsha of a Shalyad and you skipped the Kuf of Kadesh and then you wrote the entire Parsha of the Shalyad. And you go, whoops, I missed a cuff. No problem, I'll write a cuff. No, there's no way to fix this Parsha. This Parsha is useless. It wasn't written in Even though the only problem is that you missed one ice. Doesn't matter. Can't fix it anymore. It wasn't done in Gimel. We're going to elaborate on this later on in this simon in Sivchav Gimel. Ice cut and dollar. The, the, the Ramah said, Vimshina. If you don't write it in the proper order, if you write the parshas out of order, puzzle the tefillin are puzzle. Says the Mishnah, you have to know what that means. Puzzle, very interesting. Hainu ha tefillin shenasu me oisan a parshias. 
the tefillin that you made out of those parshias are puzzle. Avala parshias atzman loy nifsalu. But the parshas themselves are not puzzle. You know what that means? You blew it. You were making a shalroish for Pliny Almighty. You went ahead and you wrote the parsha of Ahayaki of Yacha before you wrote the parsha of Kaddish. When you finished writing all four parshas, you put them all in and you thought you had a beautiful pair of tefillin. Then you remembered, Oy vey, I didn't write a kisidron. These tefillin are puzzle. Why? Because they contain parshas that were written out of order. But there's a way to fix it. You know how to fix it? The problem is, you wrote Kadesh after you wrote Vayakiv Yacham. You know what you could do? Let's say you wrote all four of these parshas on, on the first Sunday in February. But you wrote another parsha of Kadesh in January. Now, this Tfilin, this pair of Tfilin have a problem. Because you, the four parshas that you have in this Shel Rosh, you wrote Vahaya Kiviyacha at 9 o'clock in the morning, and you wrote Kadesh at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So the Kadesh, which was supposed to be written first, was written after the Vahaya Kiviyacha. You know what you could do? You could take out the Kadesh, and you could take a Kadesh that you wrote last month. So that Kadesh was written before this Vayakiv Yacha and before the rest of the parishes in the Shal Rosh. So you could take out this Kadesh and put in that Kadesh. Then the Tefillin will be kosher. So don't think that if you wrote the four parishes out of order, all of these four parishes are now puzzle and they could never be used. No, there's no intrinsic psal in the parishes themselves. The parshas themselves are fully usable if you could arrive at a situation where you will put all four of these parshas into a bias and it will be so that the Kaddish was written before the Vahaya Kiviyacha and that was written before the Shema and that was written before the Vahaya Shemaya. If you'll end up with a Shal Rosh that has four parshas that were written in that order, then it'll be okay. So you didn't passel the parshias, you passel the tefillin. Like the Mishnah says, Kigoyim, Em hiska lichtoi bi parshas v'ayu ki yiviyacha. If you started writing from the second parsha, you started writing from v'ayu ki yiviyacha, yu chal tzarev lozeh parshas kadesh mi tefillin acherim. You could still take out a kadesh that you wrote last week for somebody else and use that for these tefillin. As long as you know for sure that that Kaddish was written before these other three parshias. Because if you're not certain, if you have a suffix, suffix tarul chumra, it would be a suffix taraisa, we would have to go to in chumra. Also, let's say you wrote a beautiful pair of tefillin. You wrote Kaddish, then you wrote Vayakivyacha, then you wrote Shema, then you wrote Vayam Shemaya. You put everything together, everything is perfect. But now, you add it to a problem. And that is that the Kadesh became puzzle. Now you can't take out the Kadesh, write a new Kadesh and put it in, because then you're putting in a Kadesh that was written later than the other three Parshas. So somebody brought you Tillam to check. You're a cipher. Check my Shal Rosh. You took a Shal Rosh, you found a Psal, in the, in the Parsha of Kaddish. So you'll think to tell him, listen, the Parsha of Kaddish is puzzle. I'll write you a new Kaddish. No, you can't do that. The other three Parshas in this Shalosh were written 20 years ago. You can't now write a new Kaddish and put it in. It's not Kisidron. It would be puzzle. But if you have a Kaddish that you know Bivadai was written before these other three Parshas, then you could save the guy. Then you could save his trill and you could put them in. But you have to know Bavadai that the Kaddish that you have was written before the other three parshas. Or Lady it's here from Parsha Sacherim Gam Kenadin Kanal, which we just explained. Ice cut in hay. The Ramah said that like Atchila, you should write the Shal Yad before the Shal Rosh. Says the Mishnah Rosh cut in hay. Why? Mishnah Damukta Mapasak. 
because it comes earlier in the Pasuk. However, there are all those that say Fakert, that you should write the Shalrosh before the Shalyad. Because we've spoken many times that the Shalrosh is a higher level of Kedusha than the Shalyad. Why? Because the Shalrosh has the Shin of the Shem Shakai and the Dalid on the Kesher, where the Shalyad only has the Yud on the Kesher. So the Kedusha of the Shalrosh is more Chama. However, the Mishnah says, we are noyeg like the Ramah, that the we, we should write the Shalyad first. There's no Kpeda. In the Sefer HaKavonis it says, I don't know if the Sefer do this nowadays, I want to find out that Lechatchila when you sit down to write a shalyad, you should write the entire shalyad. You sit down to write a shalrosh, you should write all of the parshas of the shalrosh, ritzufim, in a row. And you shouldn't be mafsik even bedibor. You shouldn't be mafsik at all. Va'ayin b'shari tshuva, and he sends us to the shari tshuva who discusses this in greater detail. Okay, it's good to be back. Thank you so much for joining me for Liman Atara. The Schuss of Liman Atara should be making against Klal Yisrael. The Rabbanish of Shitsen, Yeshua, Srefuas, Parnasset, Shaduchim, to all those in need. And we should be zaycha to see the BS called Sedek, the Meher of Yamenu, Amen. Be well.